Hey, Justin Veruzzo from Veruzzo Photography. Today, I want to do a long-term review of the Apple Magic Keyboard for the iPad Pro. I've had my Magic Keyboard for the iPad Pro paired to my 12.9-inch 2018 iPad Pro for the last month, and I've really gotten into using it every single day, and it's really become a mainstay of my workflow. It's also actually replaced my MacBook Pro, which I sold just prior to purchasing the keyboard. So first, I just want to kind of introduce it if you're not already familiar with it, which I'm sure by now, if you're watching this, you probably are familiar with it. But the Magic Keyboard for the iPad Pro is a really cool keyboard cover, which essentially adds a real keyboard with a trackpad to the iPad Pro. Now, this works on the iPad and it's designed for the iPad Pro 2020 model, both the 12.9 inch uh, and there's a version for the 11 inch iPad Pro. One of the things that's really cool is it also works with the 2018 iPad Pros, both also the 11 inch and the 12.9 inch. In my case, as I mentioned, I'm using it with the 2018 12.9 inch iPad Pro. So just an overview of some of the main features. One, it's a backlit keyboard. Uh, this may or may not be a big deal to you. To me, it doesn't really matter, but it's a nice little touch. And if you do work in the dark, it is convenient. One thing that's really amazing about this is this dual hinge system that allows the screen to articulate back and forth. The range of motion is certainly wider than that that's on the smart keyboard cover. And I'm gonna compare it to the smart keyboard cover a little bit later in this video as well. The Magic Keyboard also has a USB-C port on the side. Now, it's only good for powering the iPad, but it's still great because you can power the iPad and still have the USB-C port available on the iPad itself if you wanna plug in something like a memory card or some other peripheral. So I'll start by talking a little bit about the keyboard itself. Now, if you've seen my MacBook Pro review video uh, from about a year ago, you'll know that I am completely in love with the Butterfly keyboard. I know it's controversial. I know a lot of people had bad experiences with it. Uh, I don't eat over my keyboard. I don't get crumbs in my keyboard. I'm very neat with my tech. Uh, so for me, I love that keyboard. It had an amazing feel. The keys were super fast. So Apple has abandoned the butterfly keyboard and has gone back to a scissor style switch, which on this keyboard is still amazing. Obviously, if you're familiar with Apple products and you've used their keyboards, you know they're just really great keyboards and this one definitely does not disappoint. It doesn't feel anything like the rubberized keyboard on the smart cover. So of course with iOS 13, the iPad added mouse support. And I was really excited about this, not because I really wanted to use a mouse with my iPad, but more importantly, I am in a work environment where I do connect to a terminal server. I use Microsoft Remote Desktop uh, and I access my terminal server through a VPN connection. Uh, I am able to do that uh, in iOS 12, and I was able to do it without a keyboard and without a trackpad, but it's really a clumsy implementation. So when I heard there was mouse support in iOS 13, the moment I had updated my older iPad, I was excited to pair my Magic Mouse with it from my Mac that's behind me. Unfortunately, even though the mouse worked, it did not work in Microsoft Remote Desktop. This led me to do some research, and I found that there were a couple companies that make a custom uh, mouse along with some subscription services that doesn't use Microsoft Remote Desktop Connection, but a different RDP client. Uh, and all in all, it just wasn't worth it for me. I used my uh, laptop and I accessed my uh, terminal service maybe once, twice a week when I'm on the road, so it wasn't a deal breaker. But when I got this new Magic keyboard with the trackpad and I logged in to Microsoft Remote Desktop Client, I was shocked to see the mouse works perfectly. So this for me is worth the price of admission. If you're in a corporate environment where you're connecting to a Windows machine, this is a deal breaker. This is definitely worth it. The, the price, of course, for this is $350 as of right now, which is super expensive. But if you add up subscription costs and special custom mice that you need to use currently to hop on through your iPad, then it really becomes a much better value proposition. Now, one of the other features of this uh, Magic Keyboard cover is that it does have a great magnetic system that snaps onto the iPad. Uh, it doesn't actually snap in with a cover like some of the other ones. You don't have to line anything up. You literally just kind of wiggle it and it just snaps into place. And then when you're ready, you just pull it off. 
So one thing that I didn't like about the smart keyboard cover on my older iPad was that it didn't actually cover the back of the iPad. So it's kind of nice that this does wrap the entire iPad. So it protects both the screen and it protects the back aluminum as well. Another huge benefit of this keyboard over some of the other ones is that you don't need to power it. You don't need to charge it. You don't have to worry about batteries. It actually runs through the smart connector on the iPad and the iPad itself powers the keyboard. Now I've been told that that takes a little hit in battery life, but to be honest with you, I haven't really noticed. Uh, also to be honest, I don't use my iPad 10 or 12 hours a day. Uh, so if I got the difference between nine hours or eight hours of battery life during a day, I would really never know the difference anyway. One of the things I really love about this keyboard, and I'm not quite sure exactly why this is the case, it could be a few factors, but I can actually use this on my lap sitting. Uh, for example, if I'm traveling, I'm at a hotel, I'm in a lobby, uh, and I need to shoot off an email, I can put it on my lap and comfortably type with it. I can even cross my leg and put it on one leg and it's still very stable and easy to type on, just like a laptop is. My smart cover keyboard on my older iPad, this was not the case. No matter what, it was impossible to use it unless it was on a flat surface. And I don't know that it was necessarily more flimsy, uh, and I can't speak for the 11 inch version of the Magic Keyboard. This is the 12.9, so it is a bigger surface to begin with. Also, because of the trackpad, there's an extension of the entire surface of the keyboard, so there's a place to firmly plant your palms when you're typing. Although I have to say that most of the time when I'm typing on a couch or sitting in a chair, I'm usually not keeping my palms on that extended surface to stabilize it, but it's still very stable. So this was awesome because I could not use my old iPad with the smart keyboard cover in what I would call couch mode. Now, as far as the trackpad is concerned, if you've used any Apple trackpad, they're really nice. This one's right in the same league. It's got a great feel, whether you click in the center of it, whether you click on the corner of it, it still feels really good and solid. You don't have to push extra hard if you're in the corner. They designed it well. Overall, using a mouse with iPad OS 13 is not really for me. It's great for word processing, uh, but for just clicking around the screen, it's just as easy to use my finger as it is to use the trackpad. I will say I've heard a few people complain that they think the trackpad is too small. Uh, I've not found that to be the case. Uh, honestly, I don't use a large section of my trackpad. I have a uh, my response rate very high, so I can easily swipe from left to right and top to bottom without even using more than 70% of the trackpad. So for me, that covers the majority of what I'm ever gonna do. One great feature of the trackpad is that it does share a lot of the Mac OS multi-finger gestures, which if you're used to using these, whether it's to pinch down to come to your main menu or whether it's two finger swipe uh, or three finger, uh, it does support all those gestures and works perfectly. And that is nice to have on the iPad. I'll also note, uh, I, when I was looking into purchasing this, a few people had mentioned it doesn't have an escape key or function keys. Uh, and it's true, that whole top row of what would be on a traditional keyboard is completely missing. But again, for me and what I do, it, it doesn't matter at all. I don't really need an escape key, uh, especially with the gesture support. Uh, and I don't, uh, I don't use the function keys that much if I'm word processing. Uh, and in the terminal server, it would have been nice to have the function keys. Uh, however, I don't mind actually just opening up the virtual keyboard for the few times I do need to use a function key on a remote desktop connection with a Windows PC. So although everything sounds great, there are just a few little negatives, and I don't want to be nitpicking, but it is heavy. Uh, it is definitely the iPad 12.9 with the cover uh, is at least as heavy as my MacBook was, if not a little bit heavier. Uh, so you definitely lose that lightness. But on the flip side, it's almost like a two-in-one now. You've got a laptop, and then when you get home, you can just yank it out of that cover with one pull. You don't have to unsnap or pop it out of a case. You literally just pull it off, and you now have a really nice, light, wonderful tablet to use as well. So I like that it's convertible in that sense without having to fold something behind it. Uh, I've never been a big fan of like the Lenovo Yogas or ones where the keyboard folds backwards. Uh, so it is really nice that you can just pull it off and now you've got this great iPad portable tablet. Uh, and then when you're working or you need word processing or you need that keyboard or you want the trackpad for editing, photo editing, video editing, anything like that, you just snap it on and boom, you're good. There's no pairing. There's no Bluetooth connection. It's, it's hardwired when it snaps in, it makes that contact, it lights up and you're ready to go, which is really nice. Now I did mention that I got rid of my laptop and this has now replaced my laptop. 
But again, I, I mention this in the context of the work that I do. Uh, for a lot of people, if you're doing like uh, a lot of video editing and your laptop is your main device to do that and you don't have a big desktop, then this probably will not work for you. It's still not a full-blown computer, although it's getting closer and closer to that, it's not there just yet. Uh, but if you are more in the business applications where you're using Excel or you're using remote desktop, Word for word processing, uh, PowerPoint presentations, things like that, this easily easily replaces the laptop and it really does make a great great replacement for it again comparing this to a macbook for example or a similar 13 inch laptop uh, remember with the ipad the 2018 or the 2020 ipad pros you have that beautiful 120 hertz display now you've got a keyboard now you've got a trackpad it really is a nice combination but again, if you're still doing, if you're hooking up a lot of peripherals uh, or you're using a lot of plugins that are specific to applications, for me, I'm using primarily Adobe Creative Suite, which now Photoshop and Lightroom are both available on the iPad natively, and they run really good for the first version. I've been really impressed with it so far. I'll do a separate video about all of that. So all in all, whether or not I'd recommend this or not, uh, in the form that it's in, it's perfect for me. Uh, it may not be perfect for you. You really have to think about what applications are you using, how long are you using them, uh, and what are you actually trying to replace? Do you need a replacement? Uh, if you've got a desktop, a laptop, and an iPad like I had, uh, then now you can ditch the laptop, depending what you do with it. Uh, in my case, the desktop fills any voids that the iPad leaves behind. One other nice touch is I usually don't get Apple Care on my iPads because uh, I've never really had a hardware failure on any of my iPads over the years. Uh, however, uh, about a week after I got my iPad Pro, it did spill out of my car onto the pavement without a case, and I was really lucky. Uh, I got a little scratch on the side of the, the case of the metal, uh, but it did not break or crack the screen or anything like that. But having just spent that kind of money on a device, I really got paranoid, so I did add the Apple Care uh, about two weeks after the fact. Uh, one thing that's nice is that that Apple Care also covers the keyboard as well. So that's now included in my Apple Care coverage. All in all, I absolutely love this setup. I think it's great and I highly recommend it unless you're in one of those circumstances that I've already mentioned. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you already have one of these, definitely uh, let me know in the comments what you think about it and what your experience has been and if it's been able to replace your laptop. If you don't have one yet and you are considering purchasing one, you can use the link below. And if you like these videos, definitely subscribe and I will try to make more. Thanks for watching, have a great day.